Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll hit Adobe Stock, the fast growing software company. Year to date, the stock is up over 34.84%, and over the past six months, the stock is up over 17.51%. Exceptional growth. So with such a rapid rise in the stock price, the question naturally becomes, has the stock become overvalued, or is there still a buying opportunity present? Today, I'm going to be answering that question for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors, its financial strength, profitability, growth and management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Adobe is a buy, hold or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screen here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Adobe. How financially strong is the company and how likely is it that Adobe can endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at financial strength, and of course, the key metric we focus on when assessing the financial strength of a business is the cash to debt ratio. And the current cash to debt ratio for Adobe is 1.32, indicating that for every dollar of debt they have on their balance sheet, they have $1.32 to meet that debt obligation. This represents a highly advantageous position for Adobe as a firm, as if they so desired, they could pay down all their immediate debt and still have the equivalent of 32 cents to that one-to-one -one debt ratio with cash on hand to continue to expand and invest and grow operations going forward. A highly advantageous position for the company, and also when you take into account the nature of Adobe's business model as an extremely high cash flow operation, where cash flow is constantly coming in from subscription revenue, then Adobe is an exceptional financial position, well, well positioned to both endure a financial downturn and continue to compound and grow going forward. The nature of their business and their favorable cash debt position is compounded by the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 18.54, indicating a great degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default going forward. So taking into account both the Altman score, the nature of Adobe's business, and the cash debt ratio which is favorable at this time, Adobe is an in an exceptional financial position, well positioned to succeed going into the future. But that's simply the financial position of Adobe. Now let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable Adobe is as a company. So if we come over here to profitability, and of course when assessing the profitability of a firm, there's four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins, number two, the net margins, number three, the returns on equity, and number four, the returns on assets. And if we start off with the margins down here, the operating margins of Adobe are 36.53% and net margins of 38.67%. Outstanding margins. These are some of the single most phenomenal margins out of any company I've assessed. Net margins of 38.67% indicates that for every dollar of revenue that comes into the business, Adobe retains about 40% of that in pure profit. A highly, highly profitable firm and one with massive amounts of free cash flow coming in, allowing the business to expand and grow going forward. With these margins alone, the company is super appealing from a profitability standpoint. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets. If we come down here and have a look at returns on equity, you can see returns on equity of 43.71% and returns on assets of 23.66%. Now when assessing a wonderful business, we typically look for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So to see returns on equity more than doubling our target is once again exceptional. Returns on equity of 43.71% indicates not only a wonderful business model, but also a highly competent management which are allocating capital well to make decent and outstanding returns on shareholders' equity. Returns on assets, although a lower figure at 25, is still outstanding and well in excess of our 20% target. This highly impressive returns on assets figure is indicative of the low marginal costs associated with the business. Adobe is a very capital light business. Once their products have been created, they can be redistributed again and again and again with very little marginal cost. Aside from marketing, once the software is created, Adobe has very, very minimal expenditures associated with building out their business. They continue to sell the same products again and again and again, making high returns on assets with minimal marginal costs. A wonderful business model. So as you can see, on both a financial strength basis and a profitability basis, Adobe appears to be a wonderful business. Financially strong and highly, highly profitable. But now, let's get an idea for the, of the valuation of Adobe. Let's see how much Adobe is worth, because although it may be a wonderful business, if it's not trading at a fair value, then investing in the company may lead to losses in the short to medium term. So if we come down here, you can see some basic valuation metrics. And now when assessing a business using these basic ratios, there's a lot of different ratios we can use. There's the peg ratio, current ratio, quick ratio, cash ratio, all these very fancy, fancy ratios. But you guys know me by now. When I'm assessing a business utilizing these simple ratios, there's really only one I use. And that's the PE ratio the price to earnings ratio. And the current price to earnings ratio for Adobe is 54.13, indicating a significant degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward. Investors and the broader market believe that Adobe will continue to grow at an elevated rate going into the future. That's what a 54.13 PE represents. Given the high nature of this PE, some investors may be led to believe that the stock is currently overvalued. That's up for debate. 
What we're going to do later on is run a DCF analysis, breaking down the earnings per share and free cash flow of the business on a granular level, showing you an accurate valuation for how much each individual share is worth. So keep watching for that one. But before we start on the DCF, I want to break down some basic financial data here. If we come over here, you can see the revenue and net income for Adobe between 2009 and 2020. You can see back in 2009, revenue was around 2,945 and net income of 386. And then, or rather back in 2020, they achieved revenue of 12,868 and net income of 5,260. So although there is impressive revenue growth over that time, the main thing to focus on is the exponential explosion in net income between 2009 and 2020, almost 20 xing their net income in the past 10 years. Exceptionally impressive growth and indicative once more not only of a wonderful business model, but a highly competent management running the cash flow machine that is Adobe. If we come over here on a cash to debt basis, you can see yet again these numbers are impressive. Over time, Adobe has been accumulating more and more cash on their balance sheet. In 2009, they had cash of about 1,900 and debt of about 1,000. And back in 2020, they had cash of around 6,000 and debt of around 4,700. Given the somewhat high debt load that Adobe takes on within their operations, some investors may express a degree of concern. They may feel as if this creates a degree of financial risk with the business. For me, this isn't the case at all. I don't believe this debt creates any risk at all given the high free cash flow nature of Adobe's business. Given the massive amounts of free cash flow coming in, they can easily pay down both the principal and interest debt repayments associated with their debt load. The very nature of Adobe's model allows them to constantly pay down debt whilst expanding and investing their operations going forward. One of the single most cash flow generative businesses in the world doesn't need to worry about a debt load of this level. I think the business is in a healthy financial position moving forward. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see returns on capital have been fairly consistent over time with slight drop-offs in 2013-14. And 2009, of course, 2009, major pullback. A lot of companies had negative returns on capital during that time. But aside from that, we're seeing returns on capital kind of from that mid-single digit range all the way up to a high of 19 in 2020, which as we discussed before, were linked to our returns on capital of around 25%. These returns on capital, although not super high numerically in value, you can see they're consistent over time. And that's what we'd like to see from a company of Adobe's nature, a growing business. To make low positive returns on capital as they expand and grow their business is fine for me as an investor. What I would like to see is Adobe posting slightly higher returns on capital as they mature more as a business. Once growth kind of tapers off and they become a more mature operation focusing purely on cash flow, I would like to see returns on capital elevate more up to that kind of more up to that high teens, perhaps even low twenties figure as the business becomes more and more mature. So that's some basic financial data associated with Adobe, uh, the PE ratio to give you an idea of how much the stock might be worth and also some financial profitability and financial strength data to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we wanted to accurately value Adobe, if we want to understand how much each share of Adobe is worth, then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. As Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and judgment day. And that is exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in, and then how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow its operations going forward. So we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. Now if we come down here, we can see the earnings per share growth rates for the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 24%, 5 years, 49.7%, and over the past 1 year, 52.3% exceptional growth over the past 10, five and one year period and exceptionally consistent growth over all those periods too. We can see growth has been accelerating in the past five years. And despite this acceleration in growth, I don't believe a 50% rate of growth for the company going forward is viable. I think as Adobe matures as an organization, this growth rate will taper off somewhat and thus a growth rate more aligned with the 10 year figure of 25% would be more reasonable for the firm going forward. So we're going to utilize that in our calculation, a growth rate rounding up to 25%, growth rate of 25% going forward over the next 10 years on an earnings per share basis. So utilizing that figure there, 25% growth rate, a discount rate of 8%. 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market and that's a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows. And then our earnings per share figure of $12.01, taken down here off a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a price target of $720.86, indicating about nine to 10% upside in Adobe stock at present, signifying that the stock may be trading slightly below its intrinsic value. But that's simply on an earnings per share basis. Now let's have a look at a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much those earnings are actually translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow its operations going forward. A free cash flow valuation, given the high free cash flow nature of Adobe, may give us a better idea of how much the company is actually worth. So let's switch over to free cash flow. And if we come down here to the free cash flow growth rates, you can see we've got the free cash flow growth rates for the past 10, five or one year period. 10 years, it's been around 20%, five years, 32.4%. In one year, 35.8%. 
You can see once again, these growth rates are highly impressive, not quite as high as earnings per share, but that's indicative of the gross nature of Adobe's business. Naturally, less cash flow translates on the balance sheet. As Adobe matures as an organization, more and more free cash flow will be represented on their balance sheet. But for now, as they're growing rapidly, growing more and more and more each year, less free cash flow relative to earnings is indicated on the balance sheet. And that's expected from a firm of this nature. So taking into account these figures here and the nature of Adobe's business, I do believe free cash will be, will be represented more on their balance sheet going forward into the future than it is today. So I think a 25% growth rate for free cash flow over the next 10 years would be reasonable going forward. This is obviously higher than their 10-year growth rate, but not quite as high as their 5-year growth rate. And thus gives us a more conservative and reasonable estimate for growth going into the future. So we're going to input that into our calculation, a 25% growth rate on free cash flow going forward over the next 10 years. So utilizing that growth rate there with our discount rate of 8%, then our free cash flow per share of $13.70, taken down here for a 12-month trailing basis, we come up to a slightly higher price target of $816.09, signifying about 20% upside in Adobe stock at present. So as you can see, on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears as if Adobe is trading below its intrinsic value, and thus presents an opportunity for both value investors looking for short-term upside and long-term investors looking to hold the stock as it grows exponentially and compounds over time. Given the market's tendency to value growth companies on an earnings per share basis, I'm going to base my price target on an earnings per share target. The market investors and the market more broadly tend to value these companies based on their earnings rather than their free cash flow, and thus I believe this will give us a more reasonable price target going forward. And thus, my price target for Adobe right now is going to be $720.86, indicating about 9% upside in the short term, but also at a great degree of growth potential going forward, allowing you to buy the stock at a slight discount to its intrinsic value and hold it going forward as the business continues to grow and compound its cash flows more and more and more. Adobe, for me, is undoubtedly a wonderful business. Highly profitable, fantastic financial strength, and growing their cash flows at a consistent rate going forward. Adobe's products are needed now more than ever. Everywhere I turn, I see their video production and creative softwares being used more and more and more, and I believe they will only continue into the future. And thus, the opportunity to buy such a wonderful company at a discount to its intrinsic value is almost too hard to refuse. For me right now, Adobe is absolutely a buy. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of Adobe stock, a company with wonderful financial strength by virtue of its high cash flow business model, outstanding profitability with operating margins, net margins, and returns on equity and returns on assets all exceeding our target values, and appearing to trade slightly below its intrinsic value. Adobe for me provides both an absolutely fantastic opportunity for reasonable short-term upside, but more so a long-term holding that can become a staple of your portfolio as their products become more and more relevant over time and the business continues to grow, maturing and compounding its cash flows as time goes on. Adobe strikes me as a wonderful business and for me is an absolute buy. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you learn something more about Adobe as a business, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you and I'll see you in the next one.